Hey everybody, it's Christina of Crafty Paws. I'm here to share with you guys a Christmas card. This is my first of the year. And it's been a rough couple of weeks with my dogs having to go to the vet numerous times. They're both doing fine, but I kind of wanted to get into the holiday spirit or mindset. So I'm using this super cute stamp set from the It's Snow Time collection. And this one is called Robin Mischief. And I got this at lovecrafts.com. So I've stamped out the main image onto some cardstock, and I'm just gonna go through and share with you guys how I Copic colored it. And I'm using three different reds on this cardstock. One is a really deep red, that's the color I'm using first, just to mark off every other stripe of this little gnome's hat. Uh, I guess it could be an elf too. I don't know, for some reason, it seems more like a gnome than an elf. Uh, but I'm just coloring it up with red and white stripes. So the edges of the hat I'm coloring up with this really dark red. That's an R39. And then I'm going to blend out with my kind of lightest red that I'm going to use, which is an R27. And I'm going to connect the two together, the white areas of the red stripes and the edges that I colored in the dark, dark red. And then I'm going to use this R29 to blend the two areas together. So that kind of mid-tone red. And there is a red kind of that's more along the line of the 29. Uh, but I wanted to jump and go really dark, dark red with the R39. So that gives a really deep kind of almost burgundy red to the edges and where there's little bits of the hat that are going to be darkest. Now I'm going to go through and color up the little gnome's clothes and I'm going to first layer in kind of this regular light R29 here just to make sure I get all of the red parts of his little polka dot outfit. I don't know if you call it like a tunic or <laughs> what, but basically I wanted to make sure I got around his beard and made sure I got as much of the polka dots clear of the red as possible. I am not a neat colorer, so at the end you're going to see how I clean up the areas where I colored beyond the circles or the spots. Um, but here I'm going to just lay in where the shadowed areas are, the cast shadow from his beard along the edges of his little dress or tunic. <laughs> and that's with the R39. And then I'm blending here with the R29. Again, kind of trying to bridge the lightest R27 areas with the 39 areas. Now for this little bird, I decided to make him like a blue bird with a red face and tummy. And the red is actually more of an orangey color. I love that combination of orange and blue together. Those are complementary colors. And the lightest areas of his face and belly at the bottom, I'm using an YR01, which is super light. Now for the blue areas of his head, his tail, and his wings, I'm using three colors here, an R2426, I'm sorry, B24, B26, and B28. And I think using those three colors, even though this is a really small area, gives him a lot of dimension. And I'm going back in into this orange area with that darkest YR07 to give the deepest, darkest shadowed areas. Now for this blue present, and I'm coloring this up blue here because I wanted to repeat the blue of the bird in another part of the image. And I'm just laying in the uh, lightest color first. And at first I was going to try and color around the snowflake areas, but I decided against that I'm just going to color the package up as if it doesn't have those snowflakes. And then I'll bring in a white jelly, uh, a gel pen to reestablish the kind of pattern of that, the snowflakes. For the green areas of this image, there's kind of uh, pine sprigs and holly leaves, and I'm just going to use three green colors. You can see here, uh, I'm using a G and a YG and another G color. And I just look at my um, Copic chart, color chart, to see what colors I think will blend well together, uh, regardless of whether or not they're in a specific color family. So I'm not restricting myself just to the Gs. A lot of my G markers have more of a mossy tone, and I wanted this to be a more 
kind of foresty emerald green color for these greenery uh, in this image. So that's why I went to the YG. And the G14 is the lightest, the YG09 uh, is the midtone, and then the G17 is the darkest, kind of more forest green. So I'm coloring up all of those little green areas at the same time. And then I realized I wanted to make this little mushroom house have red dots, kind of the opposite of the little gnome's outfit. And so I'm coloring up those spots. And I was going to leave the white areas, kind of the highlight areas of those spots, um, white, but I decided to color the up with an R27. These areas are so small, you can barely tell uh, the difference between the 29 and the 27. But at the end, you kind of get an overall feeling when you add the various shades of the same color um, of more kind of three dimensionality by adding the highlights and the shadows. For this little mushroom on the left, I'm using the same two colors. Um, and then I'm adding the third darkest shadow uh, for the top of the mushroom as well as the stalk. Um, and I'm blending that back in using basically the same color combination as I did for the gnome's hat and tunic. Uh, for his little nose, I've decided to color it up with the R11 and an R12. I also had off camera drawn some stripes onto the little mushroom house uh, base, the stock area, so that I could repeat the kind of peach tone that I'm going to use at the top of the um, mushroom base. I wanted to make sure that I got another kind of color family in here into this image because I wanted it to be different from the white of his beard and of the fur, you know, trim on his little hat. So I'm using those R11 and R12s to get a little bit of shading there. For the little door, I've decided to use a couple of E colors, an E21 and an E23 to get the wood tone of that door, as well as on this little bird house that's sitting on the top of the presents. I'm using the same browns there, E21 and E23, just trying to get in some of the grains and the edges, the cast shadow from the roof of the little bird house. And then I'm blending out again with the E21. And then to reemphasize, my stamping was a little light for that birdhouse entrance. So I just use a Copic multiliner pen to reemphasize the black there. And then I decided I was going to repeat the kind of fleshy tone of the nose and the mushroom house in this middle present here. And that's one of the kind of design tricks of um, paper crafting, I think, is to, in an image or in a project, to repeat the same colors in multiple places so that there's a sense of continuity um, and flow. So now for the beard and the mustache, I'm just using an N1. I could have used a warm, like a warm gray, a W0 or W1, but I just grabbed the ends, which is the neutral gray, and I thought that worked fine too. If I wanted to stay more in those warm colors, I could have done that warm gray, but I thought with the blues, a neutral gray uh, would work fine for this image. So I'm just using a little bit of the N1 here on the edges of that trim and on the bottom underneath his nose and underneath his little mustache to get a little bit more of a darker shadow than the N0 did by itself. I forgot to color in those little shoes, so I'm using the same browns that I did for the door in the birdhouse on his little boot there showing. And I realized I had forgotten to color the edge of the roof line. Um, and then I decided for the white stripes of his hat, you can barely see in this image because it, the white stripes are so thin, but I'm using an N0 for that area just to make the whites not so stark white. Now I'm using a white gel pen to reestablish the spots uh, on the mushroom tops because I had colored kind of sloppily as well as on his little tunic. I'm making the little polka dots there more round and perfect. I'm also adding highlights to the little holly berries um, and also to the little spots on the mushroom house roof. So, oh, and also on his nose. So that's pretty much um, completing the coloring. Oh, and here I'm adding the 
white uh, gel pen snowflakes to that package on the bottom. And I got a little bit sloppy, you'll see here, but I'm not gonna cut any of this out of the video. I just decided to make it more polka dotty and white sparkly kind of with the gel pen. So there you see the completed card. And then I'm next gonna show you guys how I color the envelope. So inside the envelope, I tucked in some scrap cardstock just so that it wouldn't bleed all the way through the envelope. And I'm using a really light touch to color up this image that I've stamped onto the lower left part of the envelope. Now, it's not cardstock, so there's not a lot of weight to the paper. It's a regular, you know, card envelope. So I'm trying to be really light with my uh, marker application, the ink application. And I'm using, instead of three colors that I would normally use, I'm using just two for most of the areas of the image. So you can see here for the kind of peachy areas, I'm using a YR01. Um, and then to blend uh, the green areas, I'm using the G14 and the YG09, but not really the dark green G17, I think it was. Um, so it's not exactly a match with the colors that I use for the card front, but it's coordinating enough. I'm using the same uh, two orange colors for the bird, for the window of the little mushroom house, um, lightening it up there with the lighter orange. And then I did bring back in that light, light orange for underneath the mushrooms. Um, and there I'm just coloring up the berries with, uh, I think that was an R27. And then I'm reestablishing the white areas. And here I decided I was gonna give some white highlights, some shine lines. Um, and then for the brown areas, just the E21 and the E23. Um, so that it has a little bit of shadowed areas and the kind of peachy areas, I decided to give a little bit more of a shadow to the cast shadow and the left side of the image of the top of this mushroom house. And I'm blending it out with the E21 there. Lastly, the bird, again, I'm not using three markers. I'm just using two, the B24 and the 28, just to get some contrast in there so it doesn't look flat, but not using too much of uh, ink to, so that it won't bleed all the way through. And that's the completed inside you see there. It didn't bleed all the way through to the back, but that's the little envelope. And then for the card front, I'm just using some fun foam because I didn't have any double-sided foam that I had enough of to back the whole card front. Um, so I'm just using some wet glue, putting on that fun foam onto the back of some craft cardstock that has some silver foil dots on it. I thought that would be a nice background for this card front for the image. So I'm putting it on a plain white cardstock card base. I've put some foam dots behind this image so that it's fully supported, but lots of layering there. And then I decided to add some veneer, wood veneer snowflakes that I had in my stash. I had three that you see me coloring up with some just plain craft acrylic paint. Um, and I'm going to let that dry. I've colored a couple more off camera just so I could add some nice layering and dimension to this card front just for some added interest. And I'm just adding some Aileen's tacky glue here to glue on the snowflakes. And you see, I'm going to layer this snowflake with another little star, uh, wood veneer piece that I had in my stash. I only had three snowflakes, so I've decided to add those and then add a couple of little star wood veneers that I also painted white. And I think that adds a nice little, um, you know, finishing touch. The inside of the card I stamped off camera. It's a wonderful sentiment from the Project Bin Maybe Christmas stamp set. And the sentiment reads, Christmas isn't just a day, it's a state of mind. And I thought that was exactly the right sentiment kind of for helping improve my state of mind right now. And I hope this brings you all some thoughts of gratefulness and thankfulness in this these troubling times. I hope you all are having a wonderful crafty day. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.